Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be, uh, something I'm not particularly used to doing, and you may well be able to understand that just from the title alone. Don't Play Eva in World Chalice is the title of this video, and this is a topic that's been on my mind for a rather lengthy bit of time, and I could never really figure out what specifically to do with it. I've seen people all over World Chalice groups and forums and in the comment sections of my videos, people asking me all that sort of stuff, talking about how many Evas and Heralds they should be running in their decks, and in my head, all I read it as is how many shitty cards should I run in my deck to make it worse and perform poor at events. So I figured just by putting it out there in a structured video format was the best way to handle things and to ultimately get it off my mind and get my opinion out there for those to consume who are interested. So with this video, I'm going to do my best to explain to you why I should preface as of right now, you should not be playing EVA in World Chalice if you are expecting any success with the deck in longer tournament play. Now, keep in mind, I'm saying as of right now, these thoughts are very grounded in the context of the game as it currently stands in January 2018. Extreme Force is being released to us in the TCG. We know about the Troy Mare cards on the horizon releasing in Flames of Destruction to us later. I'm taking all that into account with the testing that I've done, with all the things that I'm going to discuss. Now, there may very well be a card in the future that makes EVA broken, guaranteed three of in World Chalice, all that sort of stuff. But as of right now, those cards don't exist. So if you're watching this video in a significant amount of time in the future, keep that in mind as you watch this because it can't take those cards into account because they do not exist and have not been announced at the time of this video being made. So what is EVA and what does it do? EVA is a level one light fairy whose only purpose is its effect. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can banish up to two other light fairy monsters from your field and or graveyard. Add the same number of level two or lower light fairy monsters with different names from your deck to your hand, except EVA. You can only use this effect of EVA once per turn. Now on paper this seems like a fairly okay effect. It searches Lee and that's neat for combo potential, but then you realize that the only reliable way to trigger this card is with Brilliant Fusion and to a lesser extent Foolish Burial. Thusly you are now playing two unsavory draws to resolve your Brilliant Fusions at minimum and diluting your deck to do so, all for the sake of searching Lee and maybe a Herald of Orange Light. Which is terrible by the way, but we'll get to that later. Especially considering that dilution of already precious consistency is not at all needed when Brilliant Fusion and Foolish already basically surge Lee. Sure, you burn her effect to add herself to your hand from Grave prematurely, but in the long run, that does not nor has it ever really mattered. The only thing that makes that matter is when you're trying to be cute and play Eva and search Herald of the Orange Light so that then you can add Lee back to your hand and then ditch it for Herald later to make Herald function as a hand trap. But that isn't even a real problem considering playing Herald because you are playing Eva is a self-imposed problem that was made by you the deck builder and was completely avoidable by not adding these cards to your deck and thusly making your deck less consistent. I would probably be much less critical of this if not for the context in which I am constantly asked about EVA or how I see people discussing EVA in general. The context being most people who are advocating EVA's use are also the people trying to play the deck successfully, as successfully as they possibly can in the bigger tournament play areas of regionals, YCSs, whatever. If you're a casual and just trying to have casual fun with nothing to lose and you aren't trying to win anything in particular, then go ahead. Play Eva. I couldn't care less, go have a good time, fuck shit up. But if you're someone constantly trying to make your deck as good as possible for the purpose of successful tournament play, to the point that you're even going as far as to argue which gym knight to play with Brilliant Fusion with other people, then I'm sorry to tell you, but you're currently being snake charmed by the Eva package and you're making your deck worse because of it. It looks really good on paper, but in practice it is not that amazing. And I'm not even saying this baselessly, I've got countless time in testing EVA's interactions with the World Chalice deck and I've seen its benefits and its hindrances that it imposes and provides onto the deck in a pretty large sample size. I've put a lot of time into World Chalice and I've put a lot of time in with EVA since the card was announced because there's multiple different things that the card in theory allows the deck to do very well, but they were ultimately overshadowed by how much of a hindrance the card in the package ultimately is. I think what I find the most tragic about the situation is that a large portion of the people I see discussing why they play Eva are also the people playing Garnet over Lazuli and why that actually matters. Now I understand this may just be the vocal minority, but still, it's in my face all the time and it bothers me. Now I personally don't really care which Gym Knight you play for Brilliant Fusion. You can play Garnet, you can play Lazuli, or hell, you can even play Obsidian. All of them have pros and cons in different areas over one another. 
Garnet does nothing if sent from the deck, but it is at least a normal monster if drawn, which contributes to combos. It never generates a plus, but it's the safest option for play, because if you draw it, it will contribute to your play string by being a normal monster. Lazuli is not a normal, and thusly riskier to draw, but it is a plus one if sent from deck to grave mid-combo, thus fueling the combo further and making it stronger. It's a risk versus reward situation where even the risk is rather minor and is greatly overshadowed by the potential reward of adding back a World Chalice Vanilla or adding back a Shine Ball to continue comboing with Venus, stuff like that. This is why Lazuli is constantly my personal choice for what card to play with Brilliant Fusion. But then for some reason you have people who do play Obsidian, which is objectively the worst option. Seriously, don't play Obsidian. It does nothing when sent from the deck like Garnet, but if drawn you can discard it for Lee and Special or Normal from Grave. So in the worst case scenario where you draw it, you also still had to be able to play the game enough to get Lee and Grave before it's live. This card takes the worst parts of Lazuli and Garnet and slaps them right together and gives you zero benefit if you don't draw it and barely any benefit if you do. Seriously, do not play Obsidian. <laughs> But back to the point. The point is that most, if not all, the people I see advocating Eva's play are people who fall into the Garnet camp. The, I want the safest option that doesn't yield extra pluses, but I'm okay with that camp. This is a wonderful theory and way to approach deck building if your entire deck is built to be optimized that way and to that standard of safe but functional. It's been very successful in the past and will be bound to be successful in the future. However, there seems to be a disconnect in the logic breakdown because these are the people I see who play EVA the most. They are playing Garnet to make their deck the most consistent they can to have playable hands in the worst situations, but then they just slap an EVA or two in, and then two to three Heralds, and then the call it a day after introducing four to five new bricks into the deck that are just ready to plague your hands and make you raise hell when you wonder why you aren't drawing well. Why I find this particularly perplexing is that they play EVA because it searches Lee as a plus one but only off the Brilliant Fusion play. Meanwhile, Lazuli is also a plus one that requires much less shit in your deck and also adds Lee as a plus one. Albeit, as previously stated, you do soak up Lee's add back effect, but that doesn't matter. Lazuli added back a vanilla, which you can either discard for Lee or send the Seraph Knight on field for Lee and keep the vanilla. Hell, the vanilla can even be any normal monster in your deck and isn't restricted to being just a shine ball like Eva basically is. Eva ultimately only has plays if you already saw Venus, and that's incredibly limiting to the card, and thus your plays, and thus your deck's potential at tournaments. Playing a card that only works when you had to draw the best card in your deck, and only makes marginally better plays than when you didn't have it, is the textbook definition of a win more card. You did not need this card, and it did practically nothing that couldn't have already been done by the rest of the cards in your hand, but you are now winning slightly more than you were beforehand, and... I'm not saying win more cards are bad. Lazuli, by that definition, is also a win more card. But the problem comes from when the risks of the card outweigh the rewards. That is the case with Eva. Lazuli's reward outweighs the risk. Lazuli, you are playing one card in your deck, it makes Brilliant Fusion live, and that Lazuli gets to add back a normal monster, which can further your play string. With Eva, you are playing a card in your deck that requires you to draw the best card in your deck, being Venus. It requires that Venus to have resolved its effects, then requires you to have a card to put Eva into the grave to trigger to banish Shine Balls and get a search for Lee or Lee plus Herald when you could have done that with any other card that's currently in the game that triggers Eva, and you have multiple other ways to Lee already built into the deck. To make full practical use of Eva, you have to include a subpar hand trap like Herald of the Orange Light in your deck just to resolve its effect for full value, because Eva adding one, just adding Lee, isn't that amazing considering that, like I've already covered, the other cards you're using to trigger Eva already add Lee to your hand. <laughs> Meanwhile, these cards are diluting your deck's consistency and also giving you a harder time going second because Herald of Orange Light is not a true hand trap. Herald requires a fairy to discard it with, which means going second, you may just not have a fairy to discard with Orange Light, or if you do have it, it still isn't great because now you're playing with four cards in hand going second, playing a deck that desperately wants every combo piece it can have, and honestly, this just goes against the logic of the deck and how it plays entirely. You're just freely giving away cards to negate one card. The only time this works in a semi-competent you know, competent way is if you're doing something like Twin Twistering two back row away, because then at least that's value. There's, there's no real value here. The absolutely only time I would ever want to resolve Orange Light going second is by discarding an Eva to do it, because then, 
then at least it would have some semblance of value to it, because you'd be able to use Eva's graveyard effect, banish the Herald of the Orange Light that's now in your graveyard, and then add Lee or add another Orange Light. But that would require playing three Eva and three Orange Light to do so consistently, and I'm in no way trying to add even more bricks into my World Chalice deck just to do something that's only marginally better than something like Ash Blossom, Ghost Ogre, Valor, Droll and Lock would do on their own. But at the end of the day, World Chalice isn't a top tier tournament winning deck despite it being very powerful in what it does, and this is due to consistency issues and some fragile play lines. Introducing Eva into this already problematic deck and card pool does not help the cause more than it hurts it. We can even get further verification of this by looking to the OCG for World Chalice results, and in the lists that are doing well at the larger locals and larger events, almost none of them are playing Eva. Even with Troymares providing additional discard outlets constantly to trigger Eva if it was potentially drawn, almost no largely successful lists are running Eva. Why? Because it's a card that truly fills no purpose the deck didn't already have access to. Any other regular hand trap is simply superior to Herald of the Orange Light, and Lee could already be searched by the cards you're trying to use to gimmickly play and trigger Eva. It's, it's very simple. There's multiple ways to Lee in the deck. Eva is a gimmick that is already just... It, it, would be a, okay, it would be an okay gimmick if it was using a different mechanic other than the cards that we already have that search Lee, but it's literally the exact same cards. So you're just playing more cards in your deck that basically do the exact same thing but worse then you're just introducing more breaks. You're introducing more Garnets into your deck because you want this card to work with Brilliant Fusion and you never want to draw it. But anyway, those are my thoughts on Eva. Those are basically what I wanted to say. I think this card is not a card we should be playing in World Chalice uh, for the foreseeable future. Even with Troy Mares, I've tested it with that. It's just, it's not amazing. It's not great. The deck can already do these things by itself rather efficiently and rather well. Like, if you're trying to access Lee with Eva, then fantastic. That's great. You can, you can have that. But at the same time, the deck already accesses it well enough. There's three copies of Lee, there's three copies of Brilliant Fusion, there's World Legacy, World Chalice that already searches it, and then there's Foolish. There's already ten cards in your deck that access for Lee. Eva is sort of just adding an additional card that it only improves your chances marginally and it's introducing bricks into your deck and it's just it's not something that you should be playing there was only one slightly okay play that eva provided and that was again utilizing venus the best card in the deck but that was with summon sorceress being able to use summon sorceress to target a shine ball in its arrow and summon an eva from your deck and then link away with eva and the shine ball or eva and the summon sorceress into uh, like Firewall or into some other Link 2 if you're linked away with Shine Ball, and then Eva would trigger and search for Lee. That was like one of the only good interactions it had, and it wasn't even that amazing considering that it required your hand to be basically dog shit for it to be relevant. It wasn't something that was good in a large amount of playtesting sample size like pool, but anyway. That's my thoughts on Eva. I don't think you should be playing the card in World Chalice. I think that there might be a card that makes the card really good in the future, but as of right now, that card does not exist, and there's no way in hell there's an Eva in my deck unless something very drastic changes in terms of discovered combos and discovered playlines, even with Troy Mares. Troy Mares, like, triggering this card is just so extra, it doesn't really matter half the time, and it's just, it's, it's not something that I'm willing to experiment with any further or entertain the thought of because again like i said you make your deck less consistent you're hurting your chances of having success with the deck but anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below as always i'm not trying to trigger or offend anyone here i'm just trying to present my point let me know your own point in the comments down below and let's maybe trigger some discussions let's have some discussions on this card maybe you could influence my opinions to sway a little bit but other than that as i've already said thanks for watching Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Check out the links in the description if you want to you know, check out those and help out the channel and stuff. But other than that, take care. I'll see you in the next video, guys. See you later. But now that the video's over, I'd like to give special thanks to my patrons, Iradium, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else supporting in the lower tiers. You guys help make what I'm doing here continue to be possible. You have my eternal gratitude, as always, and you're forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.